darkness of the womb, a child, before anything, sees nothing but hears sound and hears the rhythm of the heartbeat, a consistent beat, a repetitive, consistent beat of the mother. Just imagine that for a second. Consistently, all you hear is the heartbeat of the mother for months. Because really, it's the ears that develop first. Sound is what the child is exposed to first. The rhythm, the beat, So really there's no excuse. And we all know somebody who has no sense of rhythm at all, who has no ability to dance, but actually there's no excuse. Because beat and rhythm is something that we are born with in fact. And when that child enters the world, they see light and see the world as black and white. then eventually they discover the wonder of color. And then over a period of time, they first discover the color red. And then after five months, they see the full spectrum of color. A child is born, it's born as an artist, and they create a world around them from the materials they come, come across. Before we learn to speak, we play, we make a mess, we paint, we draw, scribble, explore, and discover. So why is it that we suppress this very basic innate human nature of creativity? Society, our families, and schools. When we suppress our feelings, our dreams, our stories, to put it quite simply, bad stuff happens. It's not good for us and it's not good for society. Pablo Picasso said, every child is an artist. It's just society that stops them from pursuing it. I think we're all really familiar in society with how we've all suppressed our kind of desires. How many people do you know that say, I wanted to be an artist, but I became X, Y, and Z instead. An accountant. Our families talk about being an accountant, an engineer, a doctor. And it's very easy to separate these elements out. But a good example is of, we know Einstein was a brilliant musician. So these worlds are not always at odds.
a world of perfection where creative play mistakes are discouraged where in schools we're, discour we're discouraged from finding ourselves or conditioned to conform where we talk about thinking outside of the box but we rarely do happy accidents are necessary things discovered by chance are probably the most wonderful things in fact those unexpected moments of discovery it's necessary for things to grow and evolve anomalies within that per perfect order how many of us remember those unexpected things that happened that perhaps changed the whole course of our lives signposts in life that kind of jolt you and shake you as a street artist I always say that real beauty is something that's not inherently beautiful but rather something that transforms into something of beauty from ugliness a bit like the concrete jungle and the addition the artist makes to the urban landscape those splashes of color almost make the city breathe the walls are speaking a people are alive through the colors in the urban jungle side note here about getting permission of course I must state that got it in big bold letters on my notes here permission but these additions to city walls are necessary and art shouldn't I always say shouldn't remain on the fringes how artists should be at the forefront of driving change not a kind of bolt on a bit of entertainment, but something that permeates through society, where creativity can enter and be a part of a process for decision makers and thinkers. It's often usually people in gray suits over there making decisions for people all the way over there and not really having any real understanding no real collision and actually that collision is necessary sorry for anyone in grey suits today by the way you know I used to always ponder the value of art I had friends that would became doctors and I used to think what value do I bring to the world as an artist just painting pretty pictures. But then I realized the art is something that we can't really fully grasp. It's something that almost undefined.
tell my children, I can't really explain the arts in a simple form. I know the topic of my session is the power of the arts, but actually, I think it's very beautiful. The beauty of the fact that there really isn't any clear cut formula. There's no black and white answer to it really. And that's the beauty of it, as I said. The benefits of course to the world in how it uplifts the soul, brings color to community, brings innovation and new thinking to age old problems. How it can be embedded within our lives and we don't even see it, but we're surrounded by it. Often I wonder, why is it it's not rocket science how the arts can transform the society we live in? When I'm painting a, a mural on a street corner, I always say to people, come and stand on a street corner and see transformation when you take art outside of the gallery spaces and let it spill out into our daily lives where art surrounds us. On a daily basis, someone will see that mural, see that stencil, see that public piece of art and ponder upon it. I mean, art shouldn't really be confined. Art, it's like an animal. It should be let roam, let free to roam, really. But in order to really get to the crux of it, I think the beauty is that we can't define art and perhaps we shouldn't. And that's the magic of art. I've been witness to it. I've spent the past 20 years of my life, despite my parents, despite my community, telling me about, get a proper job. I've seen the beauty of how art transforms, of how art connects, deals with difficult issues. Art says things that human beings generally can't say. And we must embrace that and not confine art to being a bit of entertainment, not confine art to those shiny white wall galleries in a certain part of the city that only engages with those people over there. <laughs>